have a question for you. Would you donate your poop to a friend? Or would you accept a poop donation? Kind of a weird question, but today we're gonna to talk about fecal microbiota transplants. Okay, so before we dive into that fun realm of research, I'll introduce myself. I'm Taylor. I'm one of the registered dietitians, nutrition consultants, and certified diabetes educators that practices on the diet versus disease team. I've been helping clients since 2016 and gut health is my passion. So first, before we talk about the research, I'll explain what a fecal transplant is. This is when they transfer or transplant donated fecal matter into an individual's large intestine, so a colon, to someone who has an imbalance of bacteria to help support or rebalance their colon. There is some really great research in this area and it is something that has been used more commonly with say C. diff, which is a type of infection, so a C. diff infection. However, we're now looking at it for other areas as well. It's so fascinating. And in fact, C. diff infections have a 90% success rate with fecal transplants. However, first standard is still antibiotic treatment with it. And I should also note that fecal transplants are something that have to be performed by a medical professional. I don't want any of you trying this at home, okay? So why, so why does this need to be done by a medical professional? That might seem obvious, but of course, this fecal matter is translocated or transplanted into the colon via a colonoscopy. So it's not just surface layer we want to, or in the kind of final areas of your colon, we want to go right up into, our colon actually wraps around under our rib cage. We want to go up into that full colon to help transplant this healthy bacteria into the colon. It is also now being done via endoscopy. So this is going through your mouth and this goes down through your intestines into your colon and it can be transplanted that way as well. And there's some preliminary research or there's some human research as well that is doing this via capsule. And with the capsule, it's not breaking down into lowering your GI tract where we're wanting to transplant these bacteria. So those are the three routes that some of the fecal transplants can be done. Okay. So there's been lots of research related to C. diff, but what about other digestive health conditions or even some digestive gut brain axis conditions or psychoneurological conditions? There's a lot of different potentials or a lot of different areas of research that this is also exploring. One area that I find really interesting in 2019, they looked at a smaller sample size. So I think it was about 160, 170, maybe 165 around there individuals with IBS that they did look at fecal transplants from what they call a super donor. So when they look at gut, gut microbiota, they do see a reduction of certain strains of bacteria in individuals with IBS or some functional bowel disorders. With this abnormality, they were able to replace this um, with a donor, replace these bacteria via fecal transplant, the fecal matter came from a donor that had, or what they considered a super donor that had a lot of these bacterial strains present. Of the individuals that partook in this study, the recipients received their stool transplant via endoscopy, so a tube through their mouth into their intestines, where those bacteria were transplanted. So now a small group of these individuals received a placebo, so no fecal transplant or no difference in bacterial composition, for example. So a certain percentage received what we consider a typical bowel and then a certain percentage received a super donor, so high amounts of the bacteria that are often low in individuals with IBS. The moderate donors, I should also note, were donors that had no IBS symptoms, they just weren't classified as super donors. So interestingly enough, 5% of individuals in the placebo group saw complete symptom improvement, so they no symptoms whatsoever. 35% of those in the lower dose group, so they received a fecal transplant, not super, from super donors, but they did see a 40, sorry, 35% um, improvement, and then a 47% improvement in the, from the super donors as well. They then looked about a year later and they saw that these improvements lasted for that entire year. We haven't done longer term research to see what the five or 10 year research looks like, but it is important to note that this will vary a little bit depending on how those individuals then 
nurture their microbiome and maintain the health of the bacteria that have been transplanted. Again, ideally the donor is going to have some strategies to help maintain that as well. So although it was a fairly small sample size, I think it's a really interesting area of study. At this point, I don't think there's enough research to say everybody with digestive health issues should go out and get a fecal transplant by any means for IBS. However, there are some other areas, like I said, of research. C. diff is a great one if you're qualifying and you have been resistant to antibiotic treatment. Additionally, there are a few other conditions that are preliminary, but something to keep your eye out for. Ultimately, what this says is, wow, our microbiome can play such a large role in various health conditions. We can, we can look at and link certain bacterial strains with a reduction or increase in different conditions. We can look at how to nurture these bacterial strains, strains as well as how to rebuild them in ourselves. And so although fecal transplants aren't at a place where we are recommending it for other gut health conditions or gut brain access or anything else like that, it is something to keep an eye out. And right now, I think it's really important for us to nurture our microbiome, help support our digestive health as much as we can. If we can be preventative, awesome. If we're at a place where our microbiome is a little bit in dysbiosis or unbalanced, we can do things to help nurture it, to support it, and that's going to be really important. So with that being said, if you are watching this on Instagram, comment microbiome below and we'll send you our microbiome guide. It just gives you a few pointers to get started. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link below. We can't actually respond to your comments on YouTube. If you're watching this on Facebook, comment microbiome below. If you're watching this on any other platform, don't be afraid to reach out, message us, or comment, and we'll make sure to get you those guides. Again, they're not going to be individualized to you because that requires us to know more about your history, but it does give you some of that baseline information that's really important. If you have any other questions, let me know. And if you're looking for the most up-to-date research related to this, keep an eye. I will, I will also be watching it. It's an area I'm really interested in. And we will let you know when the research gets to a place where that's something we would recommend. I should also say, this is not individual, individualized medical information. So if your gastro or your doctor is recommending a procedure, I would say trust them. I trust that as well. Um, but make sure you're going to a recognized medical facility. Cheers. It was so great filling you in on some of this re recent research related to poop transplants. <laughs> Until next time, Taylor.